Today we've got a crazy story of revenge against a sister's boyfriend. We'll get into that in a bit, but first, how I got revenge against my abusive birth father. I wonder if this counts as revenge, since I didn't do anything to hurt him directly, but I eventually got the revenge that I've always wanted against my birth father, and it pleased me. My mother got married to my birth dad when they were both quite young. Mom was 21 and my birth dad was 22 years old. My maternal grandmother and even my paternal grandmother warned her against marrying my birth father, but my mother refused. She said that at the time, she was convinced that her mother was jealous of her and that my birth father's mother simply hated him because she didn't like his father. There's a whole background story of how my paternal grandmother left her husband, my paternal grandfather, because he was abusive and got married to someone else. She left him with his father and had other kids with her new husband. Because my birth father was left with his abusive dad, he managed to convince himself, and I'm sure that his dad convinced him too, that his mom hated him and that she only left him because he had no money. Of course, he passed that on to my mom and my mom believed it, so when years later his mother warned her that her son was dangerous, she thought it was because she hated her son. My mom and birth father were high school sweethearts and had been together for years before they finally married. My birth father dropped out of high school and made money out of boxing, but his career as a boxer never took off. He had the body and strength for it, but he had a horrible temper and no one could ever manage him. He ended up disappointing anyone who saw that he had potential and wanted to take their chances on him. He would mess things up and then return home to cry to my mom. My mom has the softest heart. She could never look away from him when he was troubled, even though she begged him many times to learn to control his bad temper. After graduation, my mom was employed by a real estate guru in the area. She was his secretary. My dad was so insecure about her getting that job that he proposed to her. My mom didn't see it at the time that my dad only proposed so he could fully own her, but I suspect that that was his plan. He knew my mom had a better chance of meeting men who were way better than him at work, so he wanted to be able to prevent that from happening. My mom agreed to marry him despite several warnings. He had hit her a couple of times even before they got married. Growing up, I watched my dad hit and kick my mom many times. He took her money many times and spent it on gambling and betting on boxers. Somehow he almost always lost. Whenever he won, he would buy my mom cheap jewelry, apologize for his ways, and promise to change. My mom would accept his apology and move on from the past until he got broke and mad and hurt her again. He hurt her so many times, but the last time, he punched her hard across the face. The hit was so heavy that my mom started to bleed and fell to the floor. My dad was scared that she had died or that something terrible had happened to her. So he packed a small suitcase and drove away, leaving my mom lying on the floor, unconscious. I had returned home from school that day when I found my mom lying on the floor, writhing in pain, her face covered in blood. I immediately knew that my dad had done that to her. He had threatened to end her so many times that we believed it. He would even threaten to end me if my mom didn't give him some of her money whenever she stubbornly refused to give him money or lied to him that she had no money. I remember running to the home of an old lady who lives in the house next to ours. She was a frail old little woman and had called the police on my dad once, but when the police came around, my mom insisted that everything was fine and that my dad hadn't hit her. The old lady neighbor had confronted her about it, and my mom told her to mind her business. I remember ringing her doorbell profusely. She answered the door and went home with me. She walked as fast as her frail body would let her. It was this old lady who called an ambulance and took care of my mom when she left the hospital. My birth father came back, he apologized and even cried. My mom took him back but the scar remained on the side of her left eye. The ironic thing about this sad story is that despite the abuse, my mom never left my dad. He was the one who left us. He started dating someone else in the area, a widowed woman with children who were just about my age. My mom was very upset about it and she would go over to his mistress's home with me to hurl insults at her. I never understood why she was mad that he was cheating. I had even expected her to be grateful that she no longer had to deal with my birth dad. One day, my birth dad came home, picked up all his personal effects and moved in with his mistress. My mom cried and reported him to everyone so they could talk some sense into him. My birth dad doesn't listen to anyone, so of course he didn't listen to them. 
The first few months were heck for my mom, but she soon started to see the advantage in him no longer living with us and started to pick herself up again. My aunt was finally able to convince my mom to move out of the area. My mom had refused to leave because she thought being around would make my birth father change his mind and return home to us. One day, she went to the supermarket and saw my dad's mistress shopping for groceries. The cake? My dad's mistress was pregnant. My mom returned home that day and called her sister to inform her that we were ready to leave. For a whole year, my mom and I lived with her sister, who was an actress for a popular TV show at the time. While we lived there, she made my mom go to therapy and my mom soon started being happy that my dad had left her. She found herself and also went back to college. It was in college that she met my stepdad, who's now my dad. He was a professor in some other department and was a very sweet boyfriend to my mother. My mom grew up in abuse, so having a normal, peaceful relationship was foreign to her, and she would sometimes have outbursts and behave badly in her relationship with my stepdad. He was, however, a very patient man. I still haven't met anyone as patient as he is. He understood what was going on with my mother, and he stood firmly by her. He also liked me. I don't think my stepdad chose me because he loves my mother. While that would have been a fine and reasonable reason for him to love me, I don't believe it was. And my stepdad had confirmed to me once that he loved me separately. What is so beautiful about all this is that you are the son that I've always wanted and I didn't even raise you, my stepdad had said to me on one of my birthdays. My stepdad was very interested in computers and software. I was too. We had that in common. He loved how respectful and polite I was and I loved how he loved and paid attention to my mom. Years after they had been together, my stepdad and mom got married. It was the most beautiful sight ever and I was old enough to walk my mom down the aisle. Before their marriage though, there was a whole situation with my birth dad. After my stepdad proposed to my mom, it occurred to her that she had never properly divorced my dad. So she reached out to him to talk about getting a divorce. He blatantly refused and swore to fight her in whatever way he could. My mom was unfazed. She went on to file for a divorce. That upset my birthday and even after the divorce was done with, he filed to get custody of me. He talked big in court about going to therapy and finally having a stable career as a boxing coach. Of course, the judge threw his case out stating that he had no case at all. I had lived with my mom for years, and he never bothered to establish a relationship of any kind with me. He also didn't pay child support to my mom, though she never even tried to lawfully make him pay. After the whole litigation process, my aunt and mom encouraged me to get to know my birth dad and see if we could have a relationship. My mom even said something about him being a changed man. I didn't believe her, but I also wanted closure. Growing up with him was hard because he never actually tried to have a relationship with me. All I had was memories of him hitting my mother and I wanted that to change. We started to talk on the phone and he would promise to meet up so we could hang out. He ghosted me all the times that we planned to meet up. It was so pathetic of me to keep showing up even though he never showed up, but I would hope that he would show up. He never did. One day my mom got very pissed and refused to let me leave my aunt's house. He's not going to show up anyway. I don't want him hurting you again, she had said. All the while, I was fuming because I somehow thought he would show up and not see me. I was in my bedroom still seething in anger when I felt my phone vibrate. It was my birth dad telling me that he couldn't make it. I never told my mom that he canceled on me again. I simply resolved to never trust him again. I didn't respond to his text, and he didn't text me again either. It wasn't long after my parents got married that I had to go off to college. My stepdad paid my full college tuition. Aside from paying tuition, he made sure most of my needs were met. He would check in from time to time to ask if I was doing well financially. He wasn't just my stepdad, he was also a mentor of sorts, and his guidance saw me through college. I joined a group of people that volunteer to go to the projects and teach children how to know what to select as their majors in school. So one day, the group leader informed us that we were going to where I grew up. I wasn't excited to return there, seeing as I had bad memories of the place, but I went anyway. I didn't expect the emotions that overwhelmed me when I went there. Also, I didn't expect to be triggered by what triggered me. We had passed by where we used to live, and I surprisingly didn't feel anything. However, as we passed by the park, 
I saw my birth dad teaching boxing to little boys. That triggered me so badly that it ruined the trip for me. Luckily, there was someone else who could do what I was going to do, so I just let her. I returned to my dorm room a total mess. My birth dad never taught me boxing. Growing up, he never even saw me. It triggered me to see him being so chummy with other children. I had to tell myself that my birth dad's behavior had nothing to do with who I am. I reminded myself that I had a stepdad, mom, and aunt who loved me, so I must not bother about the one person who did not. I graduated from college and became a software engineer. After working for a private company for a while, my friends from college and I came together and decided to work on a software application. Just as we hoped, it had become a success and I started earning millions yearly. As more people used the software, my friends and I started appearing in the press more often. Before we got popular, I decided to drop my birth dad's last name. It didn't make sense to keep using the name of a man that I did not know nor have a relationship with. I dropped his name and adopted my stepdad's name. He was pleasantly surprised when I spoke to him about it. He even shed a tear. As soon as my name got out, my birth dad started sending me emails. The first email was to congratulate me. After that, he'd send emails telling me that he was proud of me and that he always knew I'd be great. I was utterly disgusted at his lack of shame and predictability. I never responded to any of his emails though. I was at the office one day when my secretary came in to tell me that my father was around and wanted to see me. I honestly thought it was my stepdad and was grateful that he stopped by. But when I stepped out, I saw my birth father. I was very disappointed. I said hello to him and told him I was busy so I had to leave. He said he had something important to tell me so I asked him to send me an email and left. Two days later, I saw an email from him. He had come into my office to tell me that he was ill and didn't have health insurance. He needed to get a surgery done and he had no money. I replied, I'm afraid I cannot help you. Cheers. He sent another email apologizing for everything he had done to me and then reminding me that he needed the money as his health was failing. He also mentioned that he knew the money was a piece of cake for me. I simply blocked him from emailing me. I know people may think I'm cruel for ignoring him and maybe I am. I got my revenge and that is all that matters to me. This guy was nothing to OP. I mean very clearly and like many other stories and situations you hear about all the time, a deadbeat who finds out you have success and you now have money comes trying to speed right back into your life saying, oh, I always knew you had greatness in you or, oh, I was only tough on you because I could tell you had what it takes and tries to sell you some sob story like they're a reality TV contestant. That said, our next story is, my sister's boyfriend messed up, so I dealt with him. I remember when my parents first brought Chloe home for a good 15 minutes. All I did was stare at her tiny little body in wonder. Parents give accounts of being overwhelmed with love the first time they hold their child. Siblings rarely give similar accounts, but this is what it was in my case. I knew instantly that she would be the most important person in my life. That day, my dad had to take me into my room to sleep because I didn't want to leave my mom's side. He thought it was because I wanted to care for my mom. I, and I honestly, I guess my mom too, knew it was because of Chloe. From that day, my little four-year-old life was changed forever. Growing up, I was determined to be a good brother. I saw it as my duty to care for and protect my sister. And boy, was I protective of my sister. I always made sure to keep her in my sight, and I never let anyone mess with her. Ever. I remember one day at the public playground, when Chloe was three and I was seven, when a boy around my age came over and said he wanted to use the swing. Even though I wasn't quite done with it yet, I got up to let him have a go. Soon though, Chloe too wanted to go on the swing. So I politely told the boy that my sister wanted to have a go, but he simply refused to leave the swing. He instead told me to go get away from him or he'd call his mom. I knew a bully when I saw one. I decided to simply walk away. It was better to find somewhere else to do. He could, after all, not spend all day on the swing. As I walked away, he suddenly shouted, Yeah, walk away with your ugly sister. Now I couldn't care less if he insulted me. I'd been insulted more times than I care to count. Going after sister, however, was a completely different issue. The sort of issue I took personally. I turned back and asked what he said, giving him a chance to take it back. He didn't and repeated what he had said. 
For a second, it occurred to me that I should probably report this to my mom, who was a few meters away from us, talking to who I assumed was another parent on a bench. She always told me to talk to her if I was getting harassed or bullied by anyone and she'd handle it. However, this thought only occurred to me for a second and was very quickly replaced with blind, violent rage. I bent down, grabbed some sand, and ran straight at the bully. I threw sand right at his face. When I heard him shriek, I knew it had hit him just where I wanted it to, his eyes. He dropped right off the swing and hit the ground. I heard him groan a little. I wasn't done though. I was focused on only beating him to a pulp. I only stopped when I got pulled off him by an adult who turned out to be my mom. She pulled me far away from him and when she was certain I was relatively calm, she asked me what happened. Before I could tell her what happened, the bully's mom came strutting over to where we were, her weeping son behind her. She seemed very upset, but like my mom, she wanted to know what had happened. I explained what had happened to her, but she still seemed agitated. My mom apologized for my behavior, and we had to leave the park early. On the way home, my mom talked to me about the dangers of violence, and how I had to try to keep a cool head. I explained that I didn't attack the bully for anyone but Chloe. She went quiet. She probably would deny it if I asked, but I know she was very proud of me. I have the five new games she bought for my console that day to prove it. As Chloe and I grew up, I became her best friend. We went out together, played together, did everything together. There were a few downsides to things, of course, like getting dragged to parties that I really wasn't interested in because Chloe wanted to go. If I got a dollar for every time I had to attend a princess-themed birthday party, I'd have about $10, but that's $10 more than I'd like to have. We genuinely enjoyed each other's company, which was good. I also sort of created the reputation for myself as Chloe's protector. People literally called me the guardian angel. I liked it honestly, it really chased off all sorts of people from messing with my sister. Even though we were in different schools most of the time, my reputation for hurting people who hurt my sister was good enough that most bullies just avoided Chloe. It also had the resultant effect that boys who were interested in her were usually very respectful and scared, which meant that they were less likely to try anything funny with her. Not that she needed my help with that anyway. Chloe was very particular about being respected, and the one guy who tried to touch her in class had already gotten a punch to the face before I got to him and added a few dozen more, right before I reported him to the school. When Chloe got to 9th grade, she moved to my school. I was in 12th grade then. By this time, I was a little more chill and I didn't guard her as fiercely as before, but I was still protective of her. There was a boy in 11th grade that she had a crush on, Tony. Tony and I were on the school's basketball team, so I knew him pretty well. For the most part, he was a pretty decent person, and I really didn't mind him dating my sister. However, he didn't seem very interested in Chloe, no matter how much she tried to get his attention. With time, I assumed that my sister's crush had simply come to a natural end. Then came graduation, and then in the fall, I was off to college. With my best friend all the way back home, I had to make new friends and create a new social life for myself. College was a pretty unique experience. It came with its own cares and worries, and soon, my almost daily calls to Chloe became occasional calls and soon just texts. We only really saw each other when I was home for the holidays, and we tried to maximize that time with a ton of fun activities. By the time I was done with my program, Chloe herself was getting into college. I moved back home to Dallas, though I chose to get an apartment rather than live with my parents, and I set up a cybersecurity firm that was doing pretty good. With work and all, I barely had time to go see Chloe in school, though I did get to see our parents every once in a while. One Thanksgiving though, we were all home when I heard a knock at the door about an hour before dinner. It was Tony. I was still wondering why he was over at the house when Chloe walked in, hugged him and gave him a brief kiss on the lips. That seemed to make it obvious that they were dating. Apparently everyone knew about it except me. As we ate, Chloe and Tony took turns explaining how they started dating to me. It turns out that she had gotten into the same university that Tony was at and they had bumped into each other one day after class. They had started talking and then Chloe's old crush had been rekindled. This time, Tony was into her and so they started dating. The reason my sister and best friend decided to keep this info away from me? 
She was worried that I'd make a big fuss. I was a little shocked and a little offended that my parents and her had kept the relationship a secret from me for months, but Chloe looked really happy, and that was really all that mattered. Plus, the Tony I knew was pretty okay, so I figured we were all good. When Tony graduated college, I offered him a place at my firm. With us spending more and more time together, we started to form a pretty solid friendship. It seemed nice to be friends with my sister's love interest for a change. We started hanging out after work, and I started to trust him more and more by the day. At work, he was also very diligent, and he quickly became one of the most valued employees at the firm. Everything seemed fine, until one day my sister called me crying. She claimed she had proof that Tony was cheating on her. I seriously doubted it because we spent a lot of time together, and I was fairly certain that he wasn't. I tried to calm her down and told her to meet me at one of our favorite spots. Her school wasn't far away and it was a pretty drivable distance. When we met, she explained to me what had happened. She had gone through Tony's phone after he had started to show some indifference to her. She had seen a chat with someone where he had made plans to meet repeatedly, especially on days when he told her he was unavailable because of work. I had to agree that it was a bit worrying that he was meeting up with another woman. It was also a bit suspicious that he was lying about where he was. However, it wasn't really concrete. For all we knew, that could be a family member or a friend that he was going to see. Even she admitted that she hadn't really seen any revealing or affectionate messages, just random conversations and plans to meet up. I really couldn't interfere in the whole situation, but I did offer my advice to her as her brother. The way I saw it, it'd be best to confront him with what she had seen and get an explanation or a confession. She said she would and thanked me for taking the time out to see her. A couple of days later, she called me back to tell me that she had talked to him about it and that they had resolved everything. He claimed that it was just a friend and it wasn't really anything. She believed him, but I still honestly felt quite suspicious. Rather than tell her how I felt, I decided to take matters into my own hands and investigate myself. The first thing I started to do was monitoring him personally. I started really paying attention to him. I may or may not have gotten a tracker attached to his car. The preliminary data I got was mostly innocuous, but the tracker I may or may not have planted in his car showed him making regular stops at a certain address regularly at least once a week. I saw this as probable cause and so I went ahead to track him in other ways. The one thing about cybersecurity is that no one is really safe, not even people who also work in cybersecurity themselves. I started to spy on him full stalker style. It was very unlike me to do something like this, but then again, this was my sister I was trying to look out for, and my protective instincts just kicked in. Just in case my fears were confirmed, I started to set him up with pretty well detailed fraud schemes with Tony's name all over it. When I started noticing that Tony was making regular transfers to a particular woman, whose name happened to match the name of one of the tenants of the apartment he went over to often, I knew I had hit pay dirt. I hired a private investigator to get photo and video evidence, cheaters style. I was certain he was going to deliver conclusive evidence of Tony's infidelity. Turns out, Tony was cheating. The woman he was cheating with knew he had a girlfriend and decided to have a relationship with him discreetly. I didn't know how to break this to Chloe, so I figured I'd just go with my plan first and then let her know later on. I contacted the police, anonymously, telling them that I was aware of someone committing financial crimes. They escalated it and soon Tony had been arrested. In light of his indiscretions and its resultant criminal case, I was able to fire him from the company which honestly hurt the company a bit as he was quite hard to replace, but I reminded myself that I was doing all this to protect my sister. Chloe was distraught when she found out what was going on. At first, she tried to support him and went as far as meeting with his lawyers a couple of times, but then I told her we had to talk, and then I showed her the evidence I had gathered. The look of heartbreak on her face as she saw pictures of Tony kissing and holding another woman made me certain that I'd made the right choice. If anything, I wished I'd put him in more trouble. She went on to confront him about his cheating, this time armed with actual evidence against him. She broke up with him on the spot. 
I can't imagine how horribly he must have felt when she did. It turns out I'm very good at framing. His lawyer tried, but he simply couldn't beat the case against him. The court found him guilty on all charges and sentenced him to 5 to 10 years in prison. When I was sure that she was stable enough to handle it, I told Chloe that I was the one who had planned the whole case against him as punishment for him cheating on her. She said she figured I was responsible. We made a pact not to discuss it ever, though. I honestly have no regrets for doing what I did. No one hurts my sister like that and gets away with it. I wonder if he knows I'm responsible for it at all. I doubt he does. Okay, so like, I totally understand being absolutely livid and upset and against anybody that cheats on your sibling that you care so much about, but 5 to 10 years in prison? Was it really worth destroying this guy's life over? I mean, I'm assuming this guy's early into his 20s. By the time he gets out, he's gonna be mid or late 20s or even in his 30s. Just because he cheated, you want to take 10 years of his life away? But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now, if you want to hear another crazy revenge story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.